Hello, and welcome to this virtual demonstration of the C4ADS Wildlife Seizure Dashboard. My name is Ellen, and I'm an analyst on the Wildlife Crimes Program at C4ADS. Throughout this video, we will be discussing the history of the C4ADS Wildlife Seizure Dashboard's underlying data, considering how the dashboard came to be, and looking at how to leverage the dashboard to create advanced analysis of wildlife seizure data. Before we explore the dashboard, we must first examine its underlying data, which is located in the C4ADS Wildlife Seizure Database. In 2016, the C4ADS Wildlife Seizure Database was created in order to record information on wildlife seizures from a variety of publicly available resources, including news media, customs reports, and other digital sources in 15 languages from all around the world. The purpose of this database was to gain better insight into illicit wildlife trafficking. And today, the C4ADS Wildlife Seizure Database contains information on over 5,000 seizures from 2013 to the present, spanning over 100 jurisdictions, all transportation sectors, and five key categories of frequently trafficked wildlife, elephant ivory, rhino horn, pangolin products, tigers, and leopards. Since its creation in 2016, analysts at C4ADS have continued to use this database to guide our own internal analysis, as well as to produce public reports and to contribute to news articles on the topic of illicit wildlife trafficking. Through these experiences, we have found that seizure data can provide insight into highly trafficked areas, common obfuscation methods, and enforcement success rates in different jurisdictions. In essence, through the comprehensive collection and analysis of seizure data, it becomes possible to trace the development of trends, assess the relative significance of different typologies, and develop a more holistic picture of an otherwise clandestine activity. However, we must be transparent about the limitations inherent in using seizure data. Seizure data is an imperfect proxy for assessing the illicit wildlife trade. While it is the best quantitative proxy available in our opinion, it can be skewed by a number of factors, including reporting bias and varying patterns of law enforcement activity. Most significantly, seizure data can only show the small amount of the illicit wildlife trade that is intercepted, thereby omitting information about successful routes, methods, and actors. That's why we must caveat that seizure data is best used to supplement or contextualize qualitative research produced by organizations on the ground in countries touched by illicit wildlife trafficking. Of course, seizure data has always had its own intrinsic value, but it became of particular interest to many stakeholders in tracing the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. As a result, we saw an increase in requests for data access from members of law enforcement, journalists, and private stakeholders. Those results, combined with the value that we see in making this data publicly accessible, drove us to create the dashboard with the assistance of C4ADS's data and technology team and dedicated software engineers. So, how does the dashboard work? This diagram, here on the dashboard's About page, maps out our data collection process. Specifically, we'll focus on the automated cleaning pipeline here. We've created this pipeline in order to feed data from our structured data holdings, where analysts curate the data, into the dashboard. The pipeline is set up using Amazon Web Services, so it is entirely cloud-based. During this part of the process, the data is read from its source location, and a backup of the data is automatically created in case of an emergency. From there, numerous checks on the data for accuracy are conducted by the system in order to identify human error. In any data collection project where humans are involved in the collection process, human error is inevitable. So we check the data thoroughly with code each time it is loaded into the dashboard in order to try to minimize these errors. Next, the clean data is loaded into the dashboard's database, which is also hosted in the cloud. And then from there, the user can use the dashboard to query the data however they like and as often as needed. This pipeline rewrites the database anew every night, so the dashboard is always displaying the most up-to-date data. Therefore, if an analyst like myself finds a seizure in the open source today and adds that data to our database, the information will be reflected on the dashboard tomorrow. Similarly, if analysts are presented with updated information about an existing seizure, 
Those changes will also be implemented on the dashboard the next day. You may be wondering, what allows our database to be so adaptable? In fact, the underlying data in the C4ADS Wildlife Seizure Database has been adapted several times, as the analytical questions that we want to answer change over time. In some cases, we've had to do overhauls of the entire dataset, requiring analysts to go back through the database to fill out information that hadn't been previously structured from the original sources. As I mentioned before, the sources of our seizure data may include news media articles, customs reports, and other digital sources. This flexibility is possible because of the rigorous sourcing process that we employ. We preserve PDF copies of each source in our centralized wildlife trafficking investigative database, which is housed in Palantir Gotham. So, if a source's URL changes or is no longer active, we'll still have access to a record of that source. Therefore, in its current form, our database is very well suited for the kind of analysis that we do, because we collect and structure as much information as we can from our sources. Even if we don't plan to use a certain type of data in an upcoming analysis, we still retain that information because it may become important at a later time. If you're interested in learning more about the data collection process or our methodology, please visit the About page on the dashboard or please contact us at wildlife at c4ads.org. Now that we've heard a bit about how the C4ADS Wildlife Seizure Dashboard works and the data behind it, we're going to walk through an example of seizure data analysis using the dashboard. As I mentioned before, one of the most common questions we're asked nowadays regarding our seizure data is about how the COVID-19 pandemic impacted wildlife seizures. So on that note, let's begin and see what we can find out from exploring the dashboard. As we all know, the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic resulted in widespread disturbances to trade and transportation systems. This also applied to the operations of illicit trafficking networks who often co-op licit systems to conduct their business. Now, the C4ADS Wildlife Seizure Dashboard contains quite a lot of data. So if we're interested in a particular wildlife category, transportation sector, time frame, or location, we can use the filter here on the left side of the page to customize our results. The filter will automatically adjust both graphic and narrative analysis throughout the dashboard to answer your questions about wildlife seizure trends. To give you a sense of what this means, there are both dynamic graphs and maps, as well as sentences, throughout the dashboard which react to the filters that you select. The tabs at the top of the page designate different forms of analysis grouped by theme. We have over time, transport type, location, and the country profile page, which includes country-specific overviews of wildlife seizures. We'll walk through each of these pages to explore the different forms of analysis we can do to evaluate how the COVID-19 pandemic affected wildlife seizures. In this case, we're interested in comparing pre-pandemic years to pandemic years. So to start with, we can apply a date filter of our pre-pandemic years, 2018 to 2019, and already, as this filter is applied, we can see that the map here on the right adjusted to the, our selections. In this case, it's showing that China was linked to 564 wildlife seizures, for example. Now, if we go and filter to our pandemic years of 2020 to 2021, it looks like many of the same countries are highlighted on this map. But when we hover over to see the number of seizures linked to these countries, you'll notice that the numbers are in general much lower. For example, China was only linked to 282 seizures during the time period of 2020 to 2021. We can also add or remove filters at any time. So perhaps we're only interested in seizures of ivory, transported by land. And in order to clear our filters and reset the map, we can select reset all filters here. Here on the overtime page, we have a number of graphs which can toggle between displaying both the count and the weight of wildlife seizures. If you hover over the data on the first graph here, you'll be able to see the total overall number of reported wildlife seizures for each year. Even if two categories of wildlife, like ivory and pangolin scales, for example, were seized in the same incident, 
We count that here in the total as one seizure, but we also break it down by wildlife category in the graph to provide additional context. If we continue on down the page, looking at this bar chart here, and we filter to 2017 to 2021, we're able to see that overall wildlife seizures were lower in 2020 than in 2019, and that seizures did not necessarily rebound in 2021, which marked year two of the pandemic. Moreover, if we toggle to the weight of wildlife seizures, we can see a rather stark difference, particularly with the weight of pangolin scales seized, shown here in pink. And while there was a slight increase in 2021, it's still nowhere close to the total kilogram seized prior to the pandemic. I can even get an exact number for the percentage decrease if I look here in this next sentence and adjust my filters accordingly to pangolin and 2019 to 2020. We can see that the sentence reacted to these filters and produced precise numbers without me having to do any math whatsoever. And we can see that the result is a 76% decrease. Now, I'm curious because in recent years, there have been several notable bulk seizures of penguin scales transported by sea in shipping containers. Given that the COVID-19 pandemic disrupted global shipping, I wonder if there was any effect on the weight of seized pangolin shipments transported by the maritime sector. If we filter to sea, we can see that the weight of seized pangolin scales transported by sea actually declined by 91% between 2019 and 2020. So now that we've established that both the number and the weight of overall wildlife seizures were lower in pandemic years than pre-pandemic years, the question becomes, to what extent did the pandemic affect how seized wildlife shipments were being transported? We can head over to the transport type page to explore this topic further. As this page explains, licit transportation networks can be co-opted by illicit trafficking operations. So it's important to examine wildlife seizures through this lens as well. We at C4ADS find the data on the transport type page to be particularly significant when engaging members of the transportation industry who are interested in understanding more about the trends in wildlife seizures. And while you can filter to transport type on any page through the filter here, on this page in particular, you can more easily compare data between different transport types. To start with, the first graph on this page already exemplifies a key trend present in wildlife seizure data. Seizures transported by sea make up only a small proportion of the overall wildlife seizures in our database but they consist of more than half the total weight of wildlife products seized. By looking at these bar graphs below and filtering to 2017 to 2021, we can see how this trend has played out in the transportation sectors over the years, toggling between both the number of seizures for each transport method and the weight of seized wildlife shipments. As we can see through these four graphs here, two transportation sectors in particular, air and maritime, appear to have been more significantly affected by the emergence of the COVID-19 pandemic. Although there are several potential explanations for this, we could consider the fact that while air and maritime sectors experienced significant closures due to lockdown protocols, land transportation was disrupted to a lesser extent. Admittedly, to me, this is a really interesting aspect of the analysis. As a dashboard user, I can share this exact set of filtered data by clicking here at the Share Filtered Result button. This essentially copies the URL for the exact page that I'm viewing, which I can then paste in an email, for example, and share with colleagues. That way, if you notice something particularly interesting on the dashboard, you'll have a way to easily share it with others. Shifting gears a little bit, we can return to the overarching question of how the weight of seized wildlife shipments varied across transportation sectors, both before and during the pandemic. So if we filter to 2017 to 2019, we can see here that seized wildlife shipments transported by sea were relatively few in number, but totaled the highest weight of all transportation methods. By hovering over these dots, we can also view the average weight of seizures that fit this criteria. 
Now, say that I want to be able to compare these results with the data from 2020 to 2021. A feature of the C480S Wildlife Seizure Dashboard makes this very easy. Users are able to download the dashboard's graphs, which display filtered results, by clicking this icon in the top right corner of the graph. So we'll go ahead and download and hold on to this for the time being. And for the sake of comparison, if I filter back to 2020 to 2021, we can see that indeed land was the predominant transport type for seized wildlife during this time period, while sea seizures still had a considerable weight in proportion to its number. I can bring up my downloaded graphic from before and compare the two side by side, which really demonstrates how wildlife seizures transported by sea and land changed both from before and during the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, let's take a moment to see what the dashboard has showed us thus far. From the overtime page, we know that generally wildlife seizures decreased in pandemic years. And now from the transport type page, the data indicates that certain transportation sectors like air and maritime were more heavily impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic than others when it comes to wildlife seizures. Okay, great, but there's still another question here. Did any of this have an effect on the trafficking routes of seized wildlife shipments? Moving along to the location page, we are able to conduct a different type of analysis on the seizure data that will allow us to answer that question. Similar to the transport type page, you can filter to regions or countries on any page by using the filter here, but this location page is particularly useful for cultivating a better understanding of the differences between countries that appear in the wildlife trafficking supply chain. Probably my favorite part of the location page is this fantastic chart here, which displays the flow of seized wildlife shipments between regions. We can immediately see that the flow of seized wildlife connected to Asia is quite significant. These arrows essentially point to show in which region the seized wildlife shipment was coming from and where it was going. The bigger the arrow, the more numerous the wildlife shipments flowing along that trade route. The largest proportion here shows intra-Asian trade, but there's also a prominent flow of seized wildlife shipments coming from Africa and going to Asia, which represents the intercontinental wildlife trade. When we collect seizures to add to our database, we keep records of where the wildlife shipment originated and where it was destined, if those locations are reported, of course. This is particularly interesting data for comparing trends in seized shipments that move interregionally versus intra-regionally, both before and after the pandemic began. With our pre-pandemic filters of 2018 to 2019, we see that there is quite a lot of intra-Asian trade, meaning that the shipments had both origin and destination locations in Asian countries. For shipments originating in Africa, we see that a segment of the shipments were intra-African, but there was a sizable portion that shows shipments originating in Africa and traveling to Asia. This is the trade flow that we should be paying attention to when we look at the pandemic years of 2020 to 2021. As we can see, this intercontinental section here has dramatically decreased in proportion to intra-regional trade, as the vast majority of trade during pandemic years was either intra-Asian or intra-African trade. And this makes sense, right? Because intercontinental transportation systems like air, and maritime were significantly disrupted as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic related restrictions. And here we have the data to support that claim. Now, it's one thing to talk about the pandemic's effect on wildlife seizures anecdotally, but with the dashboard, we we're able to produce data-driven analysis and quantitative evidence to back up the claims that the COVID-19 pandemic has indeed had an impact on wildlife seizures. We saw on the overtime page how global wildlife seizures decreased overall in both count and weight after the COVID-19 pandemic began. The transport type page furthered our analysis by signaling how wildlife seizures transported by the air and maritime sectors were impacted far more significantly by the COVID-19 pandemic than were wildlife shipments transported by land. And here on the location page, 
the data shows how the pandemic changed the supply chain because of a shift in the availability of transportation systems. Now, you might be wondering why I've been saying an impact on wildlife seizures and not an impact on wildlife trafficking. This is because seizure data only represents failed trafficking instances, not necessarily the whole picture of illicit wildlife trafficking. As I mentioned earlier, there are some limitations to seizure data, including the fact that it can be difficult to determine exactly why a trend has occurred. For instance, while we can tell that the COVID-19 pandemic affected wildlife seizures, it's unclear from the data alone if this was because of a decrease in reporting of wildlife seizures, decreased law enforcement capacity to seize illicit wildlife shipments, or if wildlife traffickers were simply operating less because of lockdowns or transportation system disruptions. Nevertheless, this seizure data and the analysis generated by the C4ADS Wildlife Seizure Dashboard provides important insight that can guide our understanding of trends in illicit wildlife seizures over time, across transportation sectors, and throughout the world. So now that we've discussed trends on a global level with respect to the COVID-19 pandemic, let's see how we can drill down to individual country analysis on the dashboard and attempt to determine where resources might be used most effectively to counter illicit wildlife trafficking. Let's scroll down here on the location page where we'll find these two graphs here, which show how countries fall into the wildlife trafficking supply chain and how effective they are at, at detecting shipments of wildlife products within their country. The graph on the left shows where in the supply chain various countries fall. Where information is available, our data records whether each country involved is an origin, transit, or destination location for each seizure. For instance, we can see that China, over time, is predominantly a destination country. And note that when I say origin, I don't necessarily mean the poaching location, more so referring to where the shipment originated. Now the graph on the right, meanwhile, tries to show the efficacy of each country's enforcement. It does so by using the information we record on the route of each shipment and classifying the countries involved as either having seized or missed a seizure opportunity. If a shipment was seized before arrival in a country, then it will be classified as no opportunity. For instance, let's think about a case of a hypothetical shipment that originated in Nigeria, was destined for China, but transited through Vietnam where it was seized. For the purposes of this graph, Nigeria would have missed a seizure, Vietnam would have seized it, and China would have had no opportunity. We also combine these numbers into a score called the Country Enforcement Index, which we'll discuss more on the next page. This is not a perfect measure, so we do need to have some caveats in mind while we look at this graph, but it can still show us valuable information. For instance, in China's case, we can see that it seizes the vast majority of shipments that enter into the country. But by looking on the graph, we know that China is a majority destination country. In the case of a destination country, shipments that pass into that country will either be seized and reported on, or there will be no public reporting, or it will not be reflected here because it was not seized. But this tells us that the majority of shipments bound for China are not stopped by the preceding countries on the route. In the case of another country, for instance, Nigeria, we can see that it is a majority origin country here on the left, but that the majority of shipments were not seized by Nigerian authorities. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that China is better than Nigeria at seizing products, because due to the nature of seizures, destination countries like China will have a higher enforcement rate. Instead, it's best to compare origin countries to origin countries and destination countries to destination countries. These two graphs can tell us quite a bit about where resources may be most effectively deployed in countering illicit wildlife trafficking. For instance, deploying resources to enforcement in Nigeria may have a significant impact for reducing trafficking out of this country, because we can tell that it does miss a majority of trafficking that leads through its borders. And finally, if we're interested in an overview of the trafficking activity in Nigeria or China, we can move over to the Country Profile page, which offers an interactive glimpse into each country's role in global wildlife trafficking. 
Some of the information found on the country profile page can be found elsewhere on the dashboard, but this page is a great starting point if you're interested in a given country. Note that there is no filtering on this page so that you can get a sense of the role each country plays in the long term. By selecting a country, for example, Nigeria, we can view a variety of statistics and visualizations on the entire timeline of the data. On this page, we can get an overall picture of trafficking activity in a given country. We can see hotspots within that country and destinations in other countries that are most likely to be involved in shipments. We can get an idea of the trafficking type and the methods that most often occur in relation to this country and how well a country restricts wildlife trafficking within its borders. Interestingly, in the graph of seizures here for Nigeria, we can see that seizures actually increased from 2019 levels since the COVID-19 pandemic began. Again, this may be due to an increase in trafficking, an increase in enforcement, or an increase in reporting. But from here, we can get an idea of what may be worth further study in relation to this country. And to take a look at another country, we can hop over here to China and we see actually an opposite trend from Nigeria. Since the beginning of the pandemic, seizures have gone down since 2019. We also see predictably that China has a much larger volume of trafficking given its status as a major destination country. And turning to the country enforcement index, which reflects the information we saw on the previous page, we can also see that China's country enforcement index is quite high meaning that it intercepts most of the known trafficking instances that enter into the country. And as we discussed on the location page, this is partly a result of China being a destination country, meaning that shipments that pass into China will either be seized and reported on and reflected here, or there will be no public reporting or no seizure. And finally, if you're interested in learning more about the C4ADS Wildlife Seizure Dashboard, you can visit the About page located here in order to read more about our methodology and seizure data. You can also find our contact information here on this page to request more information about our dashboard and its underlying seizure data. Not only does the C4ADS Wildlife Seizure Dashboard empower users to independently navigate and conduct advanced analysis on high quality wildlife seizure data, but as I noted earlier, it's also routinely updated, and as a result, you can check the dashboard frequently to track evolving trends. Ultimately, the C4ADS Wildlife Seizure Dashboard was designed to offer insight into global wildlife seizures across transportation sectors by placing data-driven analysis directly into the hands of counter-wildlife trafficking stakeholders. So, if you're a journalist working on an article that could benefit from having a quantitative context, we hope that the dashboard could be a useful resource for your work. And if you're interested in the underlying data of the dashboard or generating graphics beyond what the dashboard currently offers, we invite you to reach out to us directly. For supporters of counter wildlife trafficking efforts, the dashboard's seizure data analysis can highlight which areas are most critical for intervention, whether that be geographic areas, transportation sectors, or species. We are happy to speak more to you about the trends present in the dashboard's data as well. And we recognize that some of you watching today may also maintain wildlife seizure databases of your own. In the near future, C4ADS will be developing a private platform that will be able to host select partner seizure data. This platform will facilitate data analysis while maintaining security and privacy of the data for its users. If that is something that might be of interest, please reach out. We're always glad to discuss general best practices for database management and any data on transnational crime more broadly. Lastly, if you are involved in counter wildlife trafficking efforts and are interested in speaking to C4ADS about the types of trainings or investigative support we offer, please feel free to contact us anytime. I'll wrap up by saying that in providing reliable, up-to-date evidence upon which stakeholders can base their decisions, we hope that the C4ADS Wildlife Seizure Dashboard will serve to reduce the space in which illicit networks can operate, and we encourage you to be part of this endeavor by making use of the dashboard to explore trends in wildlife seizure data. If you have any questions or would like to speak with a C4ADS analyst, 
you are welcome to reach out to us anytime by sending an email to wildlife at c4ads.org. Thank you.